discovery by archaeologists of remnants of the Macquarie era parsonage on the northwestern corner of this site remind us that it is associated with the earliest phase of European occupation of the Hunter Valley. Early <coughs> illustrations and maps in the Although, is it possible to move up to a flank so that uh, we can see the PowerPoint? Maybe just... Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, of course. It's, it's much more interesting. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Sure. You can move. Right. Well, there it is. There it is. Yeah. There's There's the microphone. Microphone. I will do that. <laughs> Actually, it frames up better in the camera too. That might be from Blazing. Good on you, Mark. I'll just, will I give you the opening line again? It was well rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> the recent discovery by archaeologists of remnants of the Macquarie era Church of England parsonage on the northwestern corner of this site remind us that it is associated with the earliest phase of European occupation of the Hunter Valley. Early illustrations and maps indicate that cottages were built on this uh, site shortly after the establishment of the permanent Ping settlement in 1804. It is likely these were associated with the government domain, part of which was located on the James Fletcher Hospital site. The domain included a garden where convicts laboured under the gaze of the settlement's commandant, whose residence, as Anne Hardy has discussed in her thesis, was likely to have been located a little to the east of the Watt Street entrance to the James Fletcher Hospital. In the 1940s, subsidence about 20 yards within this entrance revealed an air shaft associated with what was, perhaps, the first coal haulage shaft in the Southern Hemisphere, sunk between about 1814 and 1817. In 1985, subsidence in what is now the courtyard to Monet's revealed the other convict era coal shaft on this site. And I don't say that to make you feel unsafe. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm assured that's all been fixed up. So from these two shafts, coal was exported to Calcutta in return for Bengal rum. I think we heard about that just a moment ago. So it's fascinating to reflect on just how many aspects of this city's history converge upon this site. Tonight, I'd like to focus on the history of the James Fletcher site from the late 1830s, when the construction of the barracks buildings, which still form a central part of the James Fletcher Hospital complex. Over the past 170 years, this site has served as a military barracks, a girls' reformatory, and of course a hospital for the mentally ill. And during this time, the relationship between the city and the hospital has often been a tense one, as local aspirations for the site have come into conflict with official plans for its use. The construction of the Newcastle Barracks, together with barracks in Sydney, later called the Victoria Barracks, was among the first projects which the renowned Captain George Barney attended to when, in 1836, he was appointed colonial engineer. Barney was also responsible, as I'm sure many of you know, for the formation of Circular Quay and the breakwater at Newcastle. It's not known if Barney's plans for the Newcastle Barracks which were to replace barracks on the west side of Watt Street, have actually survived. But it seems likely that the design was based on a template used in other British colonies, including the West Indies. Work on the officers' quarters and soldiers' barracks on the western boundary of the site commenced in 1838. It was not until 1842 that plans for the military hospital were drawn up. On the eastern boundary of this site, a guard's house, cells and engine house were built. A convict gang was employed in raising an artificial mound for a parade ground. The troops who were to be housed in these imposing new structures, members of the 99th and 11th regiments, were not placed here simply to guard convicts. Although Newcastle had ceased to be a penal uh, settlement by this time, Convicts were still being employed on the construction of the Nobby's Breakwater, and some worked alongside free labourers in constructing these buildings. However, official documents suggest that the barracks had a strategic purpose. According to Lieutenant Governor O'Connell, writing in the late 1830s, 
A military presence would be needed indefinitely in Newcastle because the Hunter River ran through the richest part of the colony and Newcastle was the principal, as he described it, the principal emporium of coal in this colony. The barracks complex was to serve the purpose for which it was originally built for a period of just eight years. Within a year of the first troops occupying the barracks in 1843, the British government cut the Imperial Defence budget. With the end of convict transportation in 1840, it was decided that fewer troops were needed in the Australian colonies. By the end of the decade, London had transferred responsibility for the upkeep of the military buildings, such as the Newcastle barracks, to the colonial government. It was a cost colonial authorities could not meet, and the last of the troops left Newcastle in 1851. For a period of about 16 years, the former barracks served a variety of purposes. Miners, for example, employed by the Australian Agricultural Company, whose, part of whose mine workings actually ran beneath this site, occupied the soldiers' barracks for a time. The former